All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at a specific instance of capacity for the AWGN channel. So we'll actually be able to write down a mathematical equation for it. This equation is often referred to as Shannon's capacity formula because this is one of the results that he derived for the AWGN channel. So for the special case of an AWGN channel, the channel capacity can be written as this. C is the channel's capacity and it is equal to B, which is the bandwidth that you have on the channel in Hertz, times log base two of the quantity one plus P, where P is the received signal power. P can also be parameterized as the energy per bit times the data rate. If you think about this quantity right here, that's kind of like energy per bit, you know, energy over bit. This is bits per second, so bit over second, so the bits cancel and you're left with units of energy over time, which is indeed a power quantity. So power divided by n naught times b. So first of all, just when you see this equation and you see an n naught, you should think to yourself, wow, this is probably for the special case of an AWGN channel. That's why the n naught um, density term is appearing there. And that's exactly what it is. n naught is the noise density in watts per hertz of the channel, and then times b. So this numerator or denominator here kind of looks like total noise power, right? Noise density times bandwidth kind of gives us a total watts of noise power, and the numerator is signal power. So right over here, I kind of have a one plus SNR. That ratio right there is kind of like a signal to noise ratio. So this whole expression right here, you can plug into, and you can compute the channel capacity, which turns out to be bits per second um, for a and AWGN channel. And not too surprisingly, it's a function of the channel bandwidth. And as B gets bigger and bigger and bigger, C also gets bigger. So the more bandwidth I have, the larger data rates I can communicate at with reliably. And also it's a function of this ratio, really the signal to noise ratio. As signal to noise ratio gets larger and larger, the argument here gets larger, and then the log of the argument gets larger. So channel capacity is also in an increasing function of SNR as well. And that seems reasonable as well based on everything we've done in the class so far. As you know, communication engineers, we like high SNR because we can achieve better probability of bit error rates and higher throughput. So just how this behaves should make quite a bit of sense. Let's, let's look at this equation in just a little bit more detail. Let's go ahead and replace the power by parameterizing it by energy per bit times data rate, and then I end up with this right here. All I did was replace P with EB over RM and split things up a, a little bit differently. Or, you know, kind of factored it as a product of those two fractions. The other thing that I did is I took the B right here and I moved it over to this side. So I divided both sides of the equation by B. Nothing too profound there though. Let's now take this equation and assume that we are going to operate at a data rate equal to the channel capacity. So in that case, I'm gonna end up with the data rate equaling C. So that means C and the data rate are the same thing. So over here, let me replace this C with RM. So I've replaced C with RM. Now I have an equation that's really for the special case of operating at channel capacity, but I can do something interesting here. Notice how RM over B appears on both sides of the equation. Let me go ahead and raise both sides of the equation to, to two. That gets rid of the log and then I can bring over the one here, and then I can divide both sides by RM over B, and I can isolate the ratio EB over N naught. That's really our signal to noise ratio. So if I do that and solve for that ratio, I end up with this equation right here. This form of the equation is kind of nice. It's basically parameterized as signal to noise ratio equals a function of data rate over bandwidth. And really data rate over bandwidth is kind of a, a key parameter. Usually, as the ratio of data rate to bandwidth gets larger, it becomes harder to communicate. I'm gonna need more SNR. As this ratio gets smaller, meaning my data rate's very small relative to how much bandwidth I have, communication kind of gets easier, and I can get away with a smaller SNR. We can go ahead and plot this curve, and let's go ahead and do that right here. This is a plot of RM over B and signal to noise ratio. So SNR versus the ratio of RM over B is this blue curve that I've plotted right here. 
So basically the way I generated this curve is I picked a value for Rm over B, and then I plugged into the equation on the previous chart to get what EB over N0 was, and then I turned EB over N0, the linear quantity, into DB, and I plotted the blue line. And then I picked another value for Rm over B, plugged into the previous equation to get EB over N0, and then put the value on the curve. So what this curve is really sketching out in the signal to noise ratio versus data rate over bandwidth um, coordinate system is the channel capacity equaling the data rate. And it's really divided kind of our world into two sides. Over on this side of the blue curve, so if I'm above and to the left of the blue curve, anywhere over here I am operating within channel capacity. So let's just think about that. Let's say that my Rm over B ratio is 1. So that's 10 to the 0 is 1. So if I'm, say, operating right here at this point right here, a ratio of 1 and an SNR of 10 dB, I'm totally fine. That I am within the channel capacity, and I can achieve arbitrarily low data rate. And actually, if I go from that point down to here, it's even easier to achieve um, good data rates there because the ratio of my data rate to bandwidth got smaller. It, you know, I'm transmitting at an even lower data rate relative to B while I had the exact same SNR. So if you kind of hold a horizontal line and move to the left, things are getting easier and easier and easier. Conversely, as I get closer and closer to this curve, say maybe that point right there, I'm getting closer and closer to the channel capacity and my, my job is getting harder and harder to achieve arbitrarily low data rates. This was the achievable region. If I go to the right of the curve or below the curve, so things in here and here, that's where I don't want to be. I am now operating at a data rate that is above the channel capacity. And once I start kind of trying to operate in this area, all bets are off. I can no longer achieve an arbitrarily low data rate. So thinking about the curve this way is a very um, handy way to, uh, to look at channel capacity and regions that you want to operate in versus regions that you want to avoid because you can't guarantee performance. Let's go ahead and do another kind of simple uh, example or computation involving Shannon's capacity formula and the form that we just kind of manipulated this form of it right here. Let's assume that we have a communication system that is trying to operate at a data rate of 12,500 bits per second on an AWGN channel. Obviously, it needs to be on an AWGN channel because our equation, Shannon's equation, is only good for the AWGN channel. If you're on a different type of channel, say a Rayleigh fading channel or a binary symmetric channel, those have other expressions for capacity that you could probably go you know, look up in textbooks and things, but make sure you don't just blindly apply Shannon's capacity formula to any channel because it doesn't apply to any channel. The AWGN channel we're going to communicate on has a bandwidth of 5 kilohertz. That's the operating bandwidth that we get to operate over. And the question that we're being asked is what signal to noise ratio do I need if I want to get a bit error rate less than 10 to the minus 6? Well, we know how to do that. We know that if, as long as we operate within the capacity of the channel, we can get 10 to the negative 6 or 10 to the minus 10, any arbitrarily low data rate that we want. So I just need to plug into Shannon's capacity formula the particulars that I was given. The data rate here is 12,500 and the bandwidth is 500. So I can plug those numbers in right here and also on the denominator. That ratio is 0.5435. And then if I plug this into my calculator, I get the number 1.8627. Keep in mind, this ratio right here, 1.8627 is a linear quantity. Most of the time, though, we like to express SNR in dB. So if I take 10 log 10 of that, I end up with 2.7 dB. So for these particulars, as long as I have a signal-to-noise ratio of 2.7 dB, I can achieve arbitrarily low data rates at this data rate for the 5 kilohertz bandwidth that I have. If the data rate gets higher, I'm going to need to have more SNR. If the bandwidth gets larger, I'm going to be able to get by with less SNR because for a fixed data rate, as bandwidth gets bigger and bigger, my job becomes easier. All right, so that's it in terms of introducing Shannon's capacity formula and also the concept of channel capacity. 
In the next video, we're gonna move on. We're gonna talk about how do I design codes to achieve capacity? Everything we've talked about so far is the concept of capacity and you know, kind of establishing what this upper data limit is. And we've said that there exist codes that let us achieve it. In the next videos and the rest of this playlist, let's now transition to talking about how do I construct good error correcting codes. Obviously, that's an incredibly broad topic. We could spend many semesters in graduate school talking about that. We're gonna really look at one very small area called block coding, and we'll start there in the next video.